Hello, my name is Dr. Ali Baumgartner and I am the Paleontology Collections Manager here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. And today I'm going to be talking to you about paleontology. So that sounds silly, right? You're the Paleontology Collections Manager, of course you're going to be talking about paleontology. But let me clarify, paleo means ancient and ontology is development, it is how things change. So it's the way that life, uh, life changes through time, ancient life as it were. Um, fun fact, paleontologists refer to people who study modern organisms as neontologists, but I'm pretty sure they don't know we call them that, so fun fact. Ontology, though, is a really cool study. It is a study of development, how things change as they get bigger. So if you just think about humans, baby humans are not just miniaturized adult humans, right? Um, babies have huge heads compared to the rest of their bodies. So by looking at the way that things change as we grow, we can get a sense of how their lives might be different in different stages of their lives. That very often for animals, the small um, baby organisms are not just living the same type of lives as the adults. They may be living in different types of environment, eating different types of foods. And that might not seem like something that you can study in paleontology, because there's this perception that the fossil record is so incomplete that how can we possibly know anything? And that's just not the case. In many circumstances, uh, we have places that have an abundance of fossils, and so we can ask these sorts of questions. So an example of this from the Western Interior Seaway. We here in Kansas are smack dab in the middle of what was the Western Interior Seaway during the uh, late Cretaceous. So this is a shallow sea that was full of big angry fish, huge marine reptiles, um, and sharks. Honestly, as a time traveler, I would never go back to the Western Interior Seaway. But because we have so many fossils so readily available across this part of Kansas, the more you collect, the better your chances of finding something that can um, help answer these questions of development. So this is an example of Zephactinus. So most of the Zephactinus that we find look um, like very similar to this in terms of the size of their jaws. So as you can see, this was a big toothy friend absolutely enormous teeth. Um, we know that these were very large fish. So if you've ever been to the Sternberg Museum, our fish within a fish, the fish that ate the other fish, is a Zephactinus. So the vast majority of the Zephactinus that are found, especially the ones that are in our collection, are very similar in size and shape to this right here. But over time, we've been able to do enough collections that we have found some truly tiny examples of Zephactinus jaws. So over here, we have these itty bitty little Zephactinus jaws. These are the smallest known specimens of this species. And we know that they are the same species as the full-size Zephactinus that we have on display and throughout our collections. And this is really interesting because you can tell by looking at them that they have the same big teeth, but they are much, much smaller. So what does that mean in terms of what the baby Zephactinus were eating? And we don't actually know how old these organisms are. Um, they would have to do some sort of histology, so cutting through the bone and basically counting rings like a tree. Um, so we don't know how old they are, we just know that they are much, much smaller. So this helps us get a sense of what the, um, the, the full picture of this environment may have been like from the through the life history of this single species. So that was looking at um, development in the Western Interior Seaway. So let's time travel a little bit and go to the Miocene. So here in the Miocene, we have two different fossil quarries. So we have material from the Minium Quarry, or here, material from the Jack Swayze Quarry. So that's from here in Kansas, from the late Miocene. The cool thing about working in these Miocene quarries is that we don't have to prospect for bones so much. We have a better sense of, we know where the bones are, now it's just a matter of digging, which means that we are just lucky to have this bounty of fossils. 
And that means that we can get so much material from the same organisms that we can begin to piece together variation within the species as well as getting a sense of maybe their development. So as I said, we have lots of material from the same species. In fact, we have enough material just from rhinos alone that within this cabinet, we actually organize them by element. So if you look here, we're looking at a drawer of rhino toes. So what can we do with a drawer of rhino toes? We've got a lot of options. Like I said, you can use this to get a sense of the variability within a species, but who knows, maybe one day we will find some um, bones that are definitively juvenile, and then that will help us get a sense of how did these rhinos grow back in the Miocene? Is it similar or different to what we see from uh, rhinos today? And that's the exciting thing. For many animals, such as rhinos and even Zephactinus, we do have many modern analogs. So we can compare to what we see in the modern animals um, to what we see in the fossils. But there's nothing quite like actually being able Able to test this in the fossil record for having this evidence of changes in size and shape through development to get a sense of the life history of these animals. There's much more to paleontology than just naming things. That's the first step. But we can also use these things to get a sense of what was the community like? What was life like for these animals? And how did they grow and develop? So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about paleoontology and we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.